So now let's get to the MIDI controller setup and also to MIDI mapping. On uh, the Ableton website, the link is also mentioned below. Here under feature comparison, actually, scroll further down. There you can see all the compatible MIDI controllers that allow for auto mapping. And they are supposed to all work as soon as you plug them in. So um, you can just check if your controller is in that list or not. If it's not, don't worry, you will get to that as well. Back to life. So now I've actually um, already plugged in my Arkai LPK25, also my BCF2000, and I also already have the launch pad ready as well. So uh, let's go into the preferences to MIDI sync. Now I'm going to plug in the launch pad. And it's already recognized. And you see here that under the control surface, the launch pad is chosen and also has an input and output automatically. What was also on the list though for um, auto mapping was the BCF 2000 that I also have and it's already plugged in and it's also turned on. But and, and you can see it down here. So it is recognized, but it doesn't automatically set. I don't know if that's meant to be like that or not. Uh, anyway, so you can either choose the BCF2000 control surface, but in my experience, that's actually not the best. It doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm going to choose the Mackie Control Classic because it actually gives me the Mackie Control layout for mixing and I use the BCF2000 for mixing. So I'm going to choose this and then choose the BCF2000 as the input and also as the output. And you can do that just the same way with your controller. So for example, even if your device is not in the list here, you can still try if another control surface actually works well with it. Sometimes it does. Otherwise, if there's none, you can check online. There's quite a lot of um, live users that have created their own control surface that you can download and install and then use. With some MIDI controllers, you first need to install a driver. Then check the manual or check the manufacturer's website if there's a driver that you can download. Download and install it. And then connect the controller to the computer. These days that works usually through USB. If you have older controllers or a synthesizer or something, then you can connect it via MIDI. One important thing that a lot of people have trouble with is don't connect it through an unpowered hub. I mean, I know there's, you know, always too little USB connections on your computer, but get a powered hub and connect it that way because otherwise the, the MIDI data stream can get interrupted or scrambled and it does really weird things. So all the controllers, as I mentioned, are generally connected through the MIDI ports. So um, make sure that you connect the MIDI output of um, controller to the MIDI input of your either audio interface or MIDI interface or that you also have these converters that you can actually plug it in via USB again. If you want to get visual feedback or some feedback of any kind for MIDI, then you also have to connect the MIDI output of your interface or whatever you're using to the input of that controller again. Then make sure if the controller has a power button that it's turned on and then start live and go to the MIDI sync preferences. So if the controller that you use is supported, it's either already recognized instantly and everything's set up for auto mapping, or you can set it up like I did with a BCF2000. Let me just unplug the launch pad. And here you see it has grayed out all of a sudden. That can mean a couple of things. Either it's unplugged like I just did, or it's turned off if it has a power button, or the driver might be broken. So you could just try and re-download and reinstall it. Let me just plug that back in. If you have a keyboard and uh, you want to just use it for playing and you have to have the input, in this case, I have the little LPK25 connected. Then I have to go to the input of it, 
and then for track, turn it on. And now I would be able to play. So for example, if I just go here and arm this track, then I can play. Some controllers actually require to have the preset dumped up here. If that happens, then this dump would be not grayed out anymore and then you can just press it. First, make the controller ready for the preset dump. Uh, you have to look that up in the controller's manual because it always works a little differently. And then perform the dump to make the control surface work. So now I've explained how it works if there's a control surface available for the controller that you have, where you have instant mapping, at least as soon as you've set it up here. If you have to set it up manually, like we just did with a keyboard in this case, if you want it to play sounds, then the input has to be turned on for track. So whenever you want to use a controller to actually play MIDI notes, may that be keyboards or drums or whatever, then track has to be turned on for the controller's input. If the controller can also give you feedback, like visual feedback, or you have motorized faders or anything like that, then you also need to turn on track for the output. In my case, I don't get any feedback of any sort. I don't have to turn it on, it doesn't make any sense. And Remote means you can map parameters to controllers. So for example, if that if I turn that on, I could use that for a MIDI mapping as well, which we'll do in just a couple of seconds. And here in this case, the input has to be on, output would have to be on if there is any feedback of any kind, visual, physical feedback. Sync is for synchronizing sources via MIDI clock and timecode. So that could be an external synthesizer or a drum computer or another computer, but that is rather advanced. So we're not going to go into detail about this. So if in doubt, just leave it off. If you're new to Ableton Live or Push, then check out my online video courses. More information can be found on my website, sonicbloom.net slash courses.